Hello and welcome to the cello tutorials. For those who just joined us, my name is Sophie Kotwalry and I'm a private teacher and deputy at the Royal College of Music in London. Today we're going to learn the new notes on the D string, new scale D major, few exercises for your left hand. Also, traditionally at the end of the video, you will find the new pieces. Let's start. If you haven't checked the lesson number three, please do so because this lesson will be really similar. As you already know, the notes on the fingerboard, they go parallel. Therefore, we will build up the notes on the A string the same way we did on the D string. Let's start with an open A string. Prepare your right hand for the pizzicato. In this case, the first finger and the thumb should be at the same line if you're plucking with the index finger. The rest of the fingers are freely falling down. Prepare the first position with your left hand. And we already spoke how to find the first position. So please check those videos as well. Plug the note A. Now try to hear in your head the note B. That will help you to understand if your played note is in tune or out of tune. So let's start one more time. Plug note A. A. And now hear the note B. B. Prepare the first finger and then pluck. That's it. Now, if the first finger is the note B, then the second finger will be the note C natural. And then check the distance between the fingers. Do you remember? If you're not using the cello tapes, check with the one finger distance. Here it is. And now try to sing the note C. C. And then after C comes C sharp. Check the distance. And C sharp. Here it is. The fourth finger goes for the note D. Check the distance. And D. And we can check it with an open D. The open D and the fourth finger D makes an interval which we call octave. And let's do it one more time. We're gonna play and sing. A, D, C, C sharp, and D. And don't forget to check. Your thumb shouldn't press. So the finger should be falling down or sinking in into the fingerboard. The wrist should be straight. Check the knuckles, they should be curved. Do you remember how we did build a tunnel starting on the D string? We were checking if our fingers are curved enough and we are not catching the A string. We're gonna do the same, but starting on the A string and plucking the D string. That will help you as well with an intonation. If you feel you are still squeezing with your thumb, then take it off the neck, but leave it at the same place. Don't move it outside right here or here. Let's do it really slowly, making sure your fingers are sinking into the string. Prepare the finger, find the first position. You can jump a little bit on the string. And again, thumb is off the neck right now. Second finger, check the distance. Third finger, check the distance. And the fourth finger check the distance but make sure the thumb is under the second finger because you might find the thumb is slowly slowly coming on this side and the D here it is let's work a little bit on crossing check what we're gonna do we're gonna use D and A strings plug them D A now place the note E now cross the first finger. I'm not taking it off. I'm doing a little slide 
on a side. Keep the first finger on the note B, A string. Now take the second finger and cross it to the string D. Where is your note? F. Check the distance. Now return to the A string. Where is your note? C. Because C is parallel to the F. Now cross the third finger to the F sharp on the D string. Cross it and the fourth finger. Because the pinky is the shortest finger, we need to give it extra support. Therefore, my elbow goes a little bit forward. Not up, but a little bit forward. Right here. Let's do G. And then cross. Here it is. And let's go different way. We're gonna start from the A string. Place B on the A string and then cross the same way, drawing the straight line. So don't take the finger off for now, just draw the straight line. Keep first finger on the note E and cross with the second finger on the A string, where is note C. Check the distance. Right, bring it to the D string. Cross with the third finger to C sharp. Check the distance. Bring it back to the D string, drawing the straight line. And do the same with the pinky. Cross it to the string A, but leave three fingers on the D string. They already should be on the D string. So it's only pinky crossing. Check the distance. Curve it. Make sure you're standing while you're sinking into the fingerboard because the pinky needs a lot of support. Now, none of the fingers are helping Pinky to press the string A. It's by itself on the A string. Draw the straight line, bring it to the D string, to the note G. Here it is. So this way, you are crossing the strings, making notes parallel and keeping your fingers curved. This exercise will force you to curve your fingers. And plus, that's a good exercise for the mapping. You should see your fingerboard as the map. It's time for your D major. Structure for the major is tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Two tones, semitone, three tones, semitone and that will help you to understand the distances between the fingers if for example you forgot the key signature as we already know one tone contains two semitones and the semitone is the shortest distance between the fingers we're not talking now about the contemporary music which forced you to play out of tune with notation quarter tone so for example we don't know the key signature of the d major how the structure will help you. Let's see it now. So D and E is the tone because between D and E we can put another note which will be D sharp or and harmonically we can call it E flat. That's going to be the same note, it's going to be in the same place. Therefore we're skipping that note going straight from the D to note E. That makes a one tone distance. Right, E. We need another tone because do you remember the structure? Tone, tone, semitone. We're looking for another tone. If I'm going to place the second finger, that's going to make a semitone, isn't it? Because E and F natural is the shortest distance. We need another semitone to make a tone. Oh, here it is. It's an F sharp. So after E will come F sharp. And let's check it. D, tone E, another tone F sharp. Do you remember what we're looking for now? Semitone. And here it is, the shortest distance for the note G. And another three tones left with the semitone. So let's check for another tone between G and A because between G and A, 
we can have G sharp or A flat. Therefore, we're skipping that G sharp or A flat and we're going straight to the A. That will make another tone, G, A. Can you see my fingers are still on the string? Because that will help me to not to lose the position. Now first, let's find the next note. After A, we can go to the A sharp or B flat, but that will make a semitone. We need a tone, which means we're going to go for the B natural, A and B natural. And the finger for the B, as we know, is finger one. Therefore, I left my fingers on the D string. I did cross plucking A and to not to lose the position, I'm just going to cross my first finger drawing the straight line and that will ensure my intonation. So my first finger on the note B will be in tune. Here it is. Right. Another tone. No. Second finger is not the right decision. We need another semitone. We will be looking for the B C sharp. Let's try it. C sharp. And at the end we did have a semitone. So C sharp and the shortest distance D. Without even knowing the key signature, we found the right notes. Let's memorize the key signature to not to struggle. In D major you will have F sharp and C sharp. Therefore, we're going to use the finger pattern open string 1 3 4 open string 1 3 because the F sharp and C sharp, which are parallel in the first position, are played with the third finger. And now the correct way how to memorize your scales. Number one, you must know the key signature. And we already found it's F sharp and C sharp. Great. Number two, follow your notes. So name them in advance or sing them in advance to ensure your finger goes on the right place because it's really hard to say yellow when you see the red. The same way your brains will work. If you know your finger work really well, naming F sharp and playing F natural will feel already awkward. And number three, always check your intonation. Let's do the whole scale. D, you can sing if you want. D, E, F sharp, F sharp, always here in your head the next note, G. Do you remember, we keep the fingers on the fingerboard, pluck A, crossing only with the right hand. Now draw the straight line with the first finger, find the note B, get there. Can you see all the fingers are following? C sharp and D and do you remember you need to help a little bit with an elbow. D and here you can always double check if you did the note D in tune or out of tune compared with an open string D. That's it. Let's go backward. And now you just need to lift the fingers. D. Then we had C sharp because of the key signature. B, B, A, can you see all the fingers are off, but don't relax because you already lost the position. So take it off and freeze just above the note you've played and get the position on the D string. Again, you can check the distances before you go. G, F sharp, F sharp, E, E, and D. D. Let's check all the steps. Know your key signature. Find the notes with the sharps or flats on the fingerboard first. So understand which finger you're going to use for them. Hear the next note in your head first, where you can sing in advance just to hear if you are playing in tune or out of tune. Take big care of intonation 
and memorize the distances between the fingers. Double check your thumb, it shouldn't be squeezing. While crossing, leave the fingers on the D string, find the first note B on the A string and only then take the rest of the fingers just to not to lose the position. Practice slow so you can follow the notes and you can name the notes in advance so you always know where you are and which note comes next on ascending or descending scale. At the beginning descending scale will take you longer and most of the students what they do they memorize the finger pattern and they are not following the notes at all. That way they do develop really bad habits because the position's gonna change. And the last, ensure your fingers are curved enough and you're sinking into the string. French folk song. Before we start, let's do a little analysis. Let's see what's new. The new is time signature, three, four, which means you have three crotches per bar. Another new is rhythm. You have dotted minimum, which we're gonna hold for three beats and it will take the entire bar. The signs up or down bow will be missed for now because we're gonna pluck it. To be able to do a good sight reading, first please check the similarities. The first two bars are quite easy. You're gonna pluck the same note three times. At the bar three, you have a part of extending scale. Bar 5, 6, 7 and 8 is a part of descending scale. And again, you're going to plug the note three times. Bar 9, 10 and 11 are similar. The same as bar 13, 14 and 15. But those bars, you're going to start from the note higher, which we call a sequence. And later on, I will show you what I mean. And the last four bars is descending scale with a little improvisation at the end. Because you already know how we learn the pieces, please do stage one and two by yourself and I'm going to join you on the stage three. We're going to play and sing, or in my case, I will name the notes. Before you start, please find the right position and the right note in the left hand. You can check it playing the open D if you want. Or you can build up a D major scale. Join me on the first beat. One, two, three. D, D, D. C sharp, C sharp, C sharp, B. C sharp, D, A. Prepare the G. G, 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 F sharp, F sharp, F sharp. E, 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 D. D, E, F sharp. very beginning and do it one more time let's work it out we're gonna do it much slower and I'm gonna stop at the places where I need to do a little explanation prepare the note D check the distances right check the hand thumb is not pressing you're sinking in and let's start we're gonna do it slower one two three I was stepping with the left hand before plucking. So we're gonna see the bar number three. Prepare, pluck. Prepare, pluck. Prepare, I mean you need to fall with the left hand on the right note before you pluck. Remember, this is a golden rule. The left hand goes first. Let's do it one more time. Step, step. When you prepare the note G, ensure all the fingers are falling on the D string. 
fingers one, two, three are helping the pinky to stand well without pressing. Generally, they are pressing the string for the pinky because pinky is quite weak. Let's continue. Lift. And do you remember the third finger was the troublemaker. So when you go for the third finger, double check, it should be curved. And let's go for the note E. Okay. When you're taking all the fingers of the string, ensure they are above the string at the same place. So they're ready to fall down at any time on the same place, because that's what's gonna happen next. Bar number nine falling at the same place. Repeat the same thing. Two, three. And now come the sequence. Bar nine was D, E, F sharp. Bar 13 is E, F sharp, G. So you start from the note above. If before you started with the D, this time we're going to start from the E, but the sequence will be the same. Now starting from the E. Do you understand what I mean? We did repeat the same order of the notes and the same rhythm pattern but in the bar number 13, we started one note above. Now let's start from the bar number 13 in a slow tempo. Do you see, we do prepare the note before we pluck it. For now, keep all the fingers on the D string while plucking the A. Because you're gonna take all the fingers and cross it to the string A. That will help you to not to lose the first position and play in tune. Let's continue the last four bars. It looks like a descending scale with a little improvisation at the end. Lift, lift, lift. And again, when I do lift, I'm staying. I do freeze at the same place. I'm not going higher or I don't go for the rest. That will help you to find the same position on the D string. And when you take the fourth finger on the board, you might feel you want to move with an elbow. Two, three. Stage four, play. Join me on the first beat. Join me on the first beat. I'm gonna add the dynamic. And first we have forte, which means strong or loud. One, two, three. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you have any question, please ask comment below. If you like this video, put the thumb, share with your friends if you think that they need a little extra help with their studies and don't forget to subscribe. If you need an extra help with the first position, there is a separate video how to establish and secure the first position with the very good exercises and you already can see the link. So just click it and we'll see you the next time.